Okay, now that we've finished our model and we're pretty happy with the way it looks, we're going to start talking about um, um, unwrapping it and applying a texture. Again, it's very important to make sure your model is totally finished, locked off, it's as clean as possible. You've um, uh, been able to get really clean poly flow. Um, your wings, you want them to be to have some shape that matches the type of shape that was on the original plane. And we do want to, in this instance, we, we tried to keep the model entirely made out of quads. So it looks very good, it's very clean. A lot of students I've seen have made wings that didn't have these, have a curved aerodynamic shape to the wing. Uh, if you haven't done that, uh, make sure you go back and do that. Um, okay, now once you've got that, the other thing that was very important I wanted to make sure is that everyone had these points down the center lined up um, as close to X um, as possible. Um, we'll get back to that in a second uh, when we uh, come to finally collapse it or, or to clip it down into one mesh, but you want to make sure. A way of doing that anyway is we can right click on any uh, vertex individually. If you hold down Alt and put the cursor just off where the vertex is, hold down Alt, it'll select the whole edge loop uh, around the whole center of the plane and um, there are some techniques for straightening that up. But right now we're going to um, uh, mark up the plane in seams so that we can unwrap it. Alright, I'll just expand this over here and I think I'll get rid of that window there, um, that little tab there. Alright, first thing we want to do is we want to break this wing off, or um, not break it off, but mark it up as seam so that we can draw our UV maps. Alright, I'm going to hold down Alt and uh, right click and you see it selects an actual um, yeah, an edge loop right around where the wing joins onto the, to the, to the fuselage. Okay, so now we're going to come over here and there's an area where it says Mark Seam. We're going to click Mark Seam. Now you'll know if I click somewhere else and then hit A to deselect those edges, now there's been a red seam that's been marked along the line of the plane. Now we want to do another one here again we can select edges individually, just go edge, go right click, select each edge. But a quicker way of doing that is just uh, uh, selecting one and then I'm just going to get out of that um, rotate mode because it's confusing me a little bit. Um, right click on edge mode, if I hold down alt, it'll select all the edges all the way around. The only problem is this has selected the whole plane in an edge loop and we don't want that. So Let's go back to doing it manually. So we'll just select these edges. Now it's very important when you're doing this with plant, with um, aeroplanes to try and think about where seams are going to be, where you want to hide seams. Um, in the case of this plane, the top part of the wing is going to be painted with a green and dark green camouflage and the underneath of the wing is obviously going to be painted with uh, just a white um, texture. So we've selected the top part, we're just going to come over here and we want to mark a seam. So we've marked the seam. We hit A again, you'll notice we've now got the edge loop around where the wing uh, attaches the fuselage and we've also got this part here. We'll also want to mark this row down underneath. Oh, not row, but yeah, I suppose it's a row of edges. And we go mark seam. So now we're left with one texture island underneath the wing, on top of the wing, and when we unwrap it that will effectively you know, just unwrap very nicely. Now when looking at texturing any sort of model for computer games, you should try and think about where you're going to hide your seams. Now if this plane is going to be in an RTS where we're seeing it you know, pretty much from top down, we're seeing the plane flying around like this in the game, we would like, to, it makes sense to hide the seam underneath it. So just, th just bear with me, but what I'll do is I'll mark this seam underneath the um, fuselage and even onto the nose and then come back this way and maybe right up to I'll do it right up to here, see how we go, right up to there and then I will mark that seam. Okay, mark seam. Now I sort of got ahead of myself a little bit. I'll do this tail wing as well first so that the tail wing can be unwrapped. 
as a, as a separate um, section. So I'm going to put a, a seam right around the tail wing to there, and I'm going to go right up the center as well. Let's see what happens if I hit Alt at this stage. No. Hmm, Control Z, hopefully. Yes. Um, so I'll just go up and select all these edges right along the top. Oops, wrong one. Come around. Now what this will effectively do is when we hit the unwrap, uh, use the unwrap utility, uh, it will basically unwrap just that tail section as one nice area to be paints for a, for a hand painted texture. So I'll just go mark seam there. I've got this, which is good. And what I'll try and explain to you now is the if we treat the whole body of the plane as one cylinder, the whole body of the plane is one cylinder. We've just put a nice seam right down the bottom of the entire plane. When we hit unwrap, it'll unpeel it like a um, like a coke can being split down the middle and and uh, and folded out, and it'll mean that we can paint the texture from top down and it'll fold out from each side. You'll see when I actually come to do it. Um, what is the advantage of that? The advantage is that we don't have to try and hide this seam right down the bottom. The texture will be something that we can paint right over and it'll just wrap around underneath. All right, the last bit we're going to do. Now that you also notice is that I'm only doing, let's check. Yeah, I did mark that seam. You also notice that I'm only doing one side of the plane. And the reason for that is, well, we're in mirror mode. Um, if I just unwrap one side, and then finally collapse it, all our seams will already be marked up and we won't have to do this twice. So I'm going to cut the wing off here. Sorry, the little tail wing just off there. Seam, mark seam. And the other one will be just like we did before. It'll be right down um, the center of the, the wing, tail wing. Let's make sure we get everything. If you miss anything, it won't work. So you have to make sure that you've covered every little texture island on your model um, or it won't work. Okay, let's deselect. So we've got that. We've got the underneath, we've got the top of the wing, and we've cut it off from the body as well. This section will unwrap, unpeel right nice, well, nicely, we hope. And we'll just do this cockpit area as well. It's coming around. And because I'm going to mirror it, I mean, of course, I'm going to collapse this. These seams will be marked up on the other side when we finally clip it, clip it, collapse it, apply the clipping. Okay, so here we go, mark seam. Now, I'll just check that's all good. I think it is. As we go around. Oh, the only other thing is on the front of the plane, we've got the little front of the nose cone. We might as well break that off. Uh, there's lots of ways of doing this, but I will just break it off in this, in this instance. Um, there could be more efficient ways of breaking that off, but at this point we'll just go with that. And I think that's pretty much it. We've marked up all our seams for how we want to break the materials, well, how we want to break the materials down into texture islands. Okay, that's good. Back to that mode. Back to shaded mode. We'll come out of full view by hitting Control up and we will now collapse this beastie if we come over here, we have to make sure we're out of edit mode. We go into object mode, put, turn clipping on in the mirror modifier, and then hit apply. Now we just now you can't really undo that. You have to just you probably would have wanted to have saved it previously. Okay, so we've effectively marked up our Spitfire. All the um, uh, seams have now been uh, uh, placed on it, so we've marked up where we want our our different texture islands to be. Let's go back out. You want to change one of these viewports to the UV image editor and it's here that we'll lay out our actual um, UV uh, coordinates for the actual texture map. So now we should come back over here. We want to select all the faces on the model. So we can click on face mode or, or um, control tab, select face mode. Then we hit A for all. We've selected all. Now we have to come over here and we want to, with our cursor over the um, viewport, we want to click on the button U to bring up the unwrap dialog. Now if everything goes to plan, this will unwrap nicely, and it has. So we've, we've managed to unwrap the, um, the top of the plane here, and as you can see, if we painted a texture, I'll just make it full screen, 
if we paint the texture onto the um, plane here, it'll paint on very nicely and we won't have any seams showing from the top viewport. We're looking at this plane from top down in an RTS. Um, we've got all the different texture islands laid out here. We've got, I don't know which one's which, but we've got the top and the bottom of the wings. We've got our uh, cockpit over here. I think this is the tail wings. No, that's the tail, you know, the upright tail, tail fin. And these are the tail wings. And this is probably the underneath of one of the tail wings, but we can work all that, all that out later. Now, once you've actually unwrapped it, and it has unwrapped quite effectively like this, what you want to do is you want to rearrange it on the on the uh, UV image editor to make best use of your texture size. Now, why would we want to do that? Because basically, we want to make sure that we're getting the most um, the most pixels uh, on our model as possible. You know, from the actual hand painted texture art, we want to give, we want to make it large. So, how do we do this? We select all of our um, texture islands. Just hit G on the keyboard and move it off. Now, as you can see down the bottom here, we've got all these other tools within the UV uh, image editor. Um, we can select any of these texture islands by vertice and move them around if we need to, uh, make adjustments. We can select by edge, by uh, face, click each face, or we can select by the actual um, island and click on each uh, texture island. Then you just hit G on the keyboard, right click, move them around. I'm just hitting right click here each time. First thing I want to start with is the fuselage. I hit G and bring it back on. And I want to make it as large as possible. Now the next thing I want to do is to select the top of the wing. Now I can't really tell from here, so I'll go back out. And what you can do on the original model here, uh, if I click on any one face, and then hit L on the keyboard, I'm actually selecting the texture island for that um, particular piece of um, geometry. Right click, L. So I know that this one is definitely top of the wing, and this one, I hit L again, select it all, and right again, right click over here, is also top of the wing, moving back on. Now let's select everything again by hitting A got everything back. But I know these two little culprits are the top wings and they're the ones that I want to have the most um, texture space on I suppose. Because, well yeah, I want to get the most texture real estate out of my map because I want the wings to look nice. Um, G. Now I did, I, I made a bit of a, a faux pas there because I moved one without moving the other. Why not select both? G, hold down shift, got two texture islands selected and now I can just scale them both at the same time and this way I know they'll be both the same size. So now I'll just move these again. And I'll do it fairly quickly. Maybe it's going to be better off with that one down there and this one over here. Now we've got both wings set up. I think that's right. Let me just check that again. So that's the top. L. Yes. I don't think I did select it. No, I did. Okay, so that's 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 the um, the right top wing, and L, and that's the where is it? Where is it? No, I thought it wasn't. I, the only reason that I thought one of these wasn't correct was because they didn't look exactly the same. So I'd say that one is. So let's undo all that. How far back will it go? That is the real question. That'll do. Now I'll just get this one, move it back on. Now I know this is the top, and I know that's the top. How could I tell? I was just looking at it, and they've both got a similar shape to them. It's got this pointy bit. Let's take these ones and put them back away. So now we know. Let's just check that one more time. Okay, that's one of the um, texture islands underneath. And this one, it's very tricky when you do it. Maybe I should do it in shaded mode. And L, and that's the other texture island, good. So I've got this one, and this one, go L. Again, in order to get them all back here, we just have to hit, there are other buttons in here that allow you to toggle, toggle viewing everything at once. Which is probably, what we probably should be doing. This allows us to see everything at once. Alright, 
now we just hit B to select everything. I'm just going to scale them up a little bit, move them on. Now we're cooking the gas. Okay, so we've got our two top of wings selected and in the right position. And then it's just a matter of bringing these other sections back on. Again, we want to find which part is the actual uh, top of the wings. It's just a matter of working out, of uh, figuring out your workflow. Okay, now we've got both of these top sections on there. So we know that this is the top of the plane, this is the top of the wings, these are the top of the tail wings. Um, both of these sections, again, I'm just clicking right click, I hold down shift, right click again, and I've got both G to move it on. Now we've, pr we've pretty much got everything that's, um, you know, the most important stuff. I'm just gonna move this, this uh, cockpit in here. I'd like to see the cockpit have a little bit of uh, screen real estate as well because it is something that's a bit of a focal point, I suppose. Um, this is where it gets interesting. You just want to find a place to put it. I could put it right in here and just scale it up a bit. Now, again, I'm rushing this because I'm demonstrating it at the same time, but when you uh, come to do it, you can take your time. It's always good to try and leave some pixels around the edges, though. Don't... don't um, don't get too greedy and leave a little bit of space for painting over. You might want when you come to paint your texture, you might paint some pixels over the um, the size of the geometry, and that's just you know, it's like coloring outside the lines, but it's it's okay. Okay, now we're really getting there now. Let's get these last two, scale them up a little bit, and again, you could also align these in a way that mm, that is is more sensible to your way of painting. Now these these two sections here I've deliberately left, these are the underneath of the wings. Now I've deliberately left them as, as, as very low. Um, um, uh, I've not left much space for them to go on here, right? So what we're going to do, I can hit scale and then go um, say 0.5, it'll make them uh, half size. Let me show you how to do that again. It's just, I hit S the scale and then on the keyboard I type 0.5 and then enter and now they've been scaled half size. They could probably be even be smaller than that because you're never going to see the underneath of the wing anyway. And that's it. I'll just move these last two sections on and there we have a fairly neatly laid out uh, UV map trying to get the most out of um, the space that we have available in our texture map. Again, if these are on the underneath side, we could scale them down as well. But there we go, that's perfect. So I'll just come out here now. What we want to do now, once we've um, mapped out, we've unwrapped our UV, basically, the UV coordinates for our plane, we want to export that. So I'm just going to come down here where it says UVs. I'm going to click on Export UV Layout. What that will do is it will save these UVs out as a image file. And I think in this case, it exports it out as a PNG. Uh, we can then take that and bring it into a photo editing program like Photoshop or GIMP or whatever and then paint our texture on. So here we go, UV image, uh, export UV layout in unwrapping. I might as well put it in here because I'm putting all my other unwrapping stuff in there and I'll just call it Spitfire Unwrap. Or Spitf I sometimes call it Spitfire Rep. No, Spitfire Unwrap. Unwrap. And then we go save, export UV and it saves it out. Do it one more time, export. And it's done it. Okay, that's great. Now, in the next tube, we will cover the process of uh, texturing, painting up a texture map that coincides with these UV mapping coordinates that we've now exported.